Hi friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Rachel and welcome to a new reading vlog. So today is March 28th. I am starting this vlog at the very end of the month of March. So I'll definitely be carrying it into the first week of April. And I think I'm just gonna be mood reading this week. That is the vibe, that is the theme. I am currently reading two books. Let's talk about those. And then we'll talk about kind of potential TBR for the week. So the first book that I'm currently in the middle of is The Love of My Life. And that is Heat of the Everflame, third book in the Kindred's Curse Saga. I'm absolutely loving this book, no surprise to anyone, I'm sure. I just love this series so, so much. It is amazing. Third book in the series has been wonderful. Oh my god, so many things have happened. I cried. You guys, I did not expect that. There's not been anything in the first two books that has made me cry. Like, there's been sad moments and I've just been like, eh, like, feel for you, but let's keep it moving. Fully cried. Fully couldn't see the words on the page anymore. It's something that happened in this book. Oh my god. I was moved. I love Penkel's writing, honestly. Needless to say, having a really good time with this. I have less than 300 pages left. This book is just super long. It's just taken me a bit of time to get through, but I am still thoroughly enjoying it. I'm reading it on my Kindle just because this is so heavy and it's over a thousand pages on the Kindle. So it's taken me a little bit of time to get through it, but I'm really enjoying myself. Cannot believe the final book is coming out in June. It makes me really happy because I can't wait to read it, but also I'm so sad that I'm going to be leaving these characters, but I will keep you guys updated on how this is going. I definitely want to prioritize this this week and get this finished. And then I started a second book this morning, and that is A Dawn of Onyx by Kate Golden. So this is a reread for me. I read the indie version of A Dawn of Onyx, I want to say like over a year ago. It feels like it has been so long since I read this, but since I read this, it got picked up by a traditional publisher. We have a new cover. We have a little bit of editing and formatting. So I wanted to read the traditionally published version before the sequel comes out in April. I realized while I was filming my April TBR that the sequel is coming out in April and I should probably do a reread of Adana Vonix, not only because it is a little bit different, but just because it's been so long, I don't really remember a ton of the details of this book. And so I put this on my April TBR, but April is going to be a really crazy month for me. I'm not going to be able to do a ton of reading in April just because I am going on a trip. So I'm going to help my future self out and read this this week instead. And I have to say, I'm so happy that I picked this book up today. I don't know why, but this is hitting so much better the second time around. And I gave this book a four star the first time I read it. I don't know if the second time around it's going to be a five star, but I'm just really, really enjoying myself. I'm having fun. There has been humorous moments that I've really enjoyed. I like our characters a lot more. I never disliked the female main character and male main character. Like, I liked them, but I'm just like loving them even more during this reread, which is interesting, but I'm really happy about that. And also because it has been so long while I do remember the big moments in this book, I don't remember a lot of those details and little intricacies. So this feels very fresh and just very fun. So I'm really enjoying this. I've barely started though. I think I'm on page like 75. So I have a ways to go with this, but I'm really enjoying this reread. And this book is really good. If you haven't read it, you should, because I really liked it the first time around. And apparently the second time around, I'm like absolutely loving it so much more. So going to continue reading this. And then I am also going to continue making my way through Heat of the Everflame. And then I think I want to start Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh, which is a contemporary romance. And it's a super popular series. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. If you are into a contemporary romance, I've seen so many wonderful things about it. And for some reason, that book has been on my mind. I don't know what happened, but one day I woke up and I was like, I need to read Binding 13. So potentially Binding 13 this weekend. I'm also thinking about reading How Does It Feel by Janine O'Reilly, which is a recently re-released darker fantasy romance and Kingdom of Ash is always looming in the background. Need to finish my Throne of Glass reread, so that's a potential too. Maybe the next book in the Lady of Darkness series, maybe City of Lost Souls by Cassandra Clare. I just wanna read it all. So we will see what I end up reading this week, but very, very excited about this week's vlog. Oh, I also did do a bit of retail therapy. Work has just been really insane lately. My brain is melting. And so I did decide to do a little bit of retail therapy. Bought myself some books. So I'll definitely be doing some type of unboxing this week once they all get here. And I'm excited to show you guys that. Other than that, life stuff. Oh, I am going to go see Dune part two tomorrow, which I am really excited. We actually watched Dune part one for the first time last night and it was so good. Definitely a movie that I wish I saw in theaters. I feel like that is just the type of movie that you should see on a big screen in a movie theater. But regardless, I really enjoyed it. I loved the plot line. I loved the visuals. I love Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya. So that was really fun. And I have heard that Dune part two is incredible and like one of the best movies ever made, not only from people in the book community, 
but also just like people I know in real life have gone and seen it and they're like, oh my god, that is the most amazing movie you guys have to see it. So I think we're gonna see Dune Part 2 tomorrow, which I'm really excited. And other than that, I think we're just gonna be hanging out over the next few days. Gonna be doing lots of reading this week. Very excited to take you guys along for that. I'm gonna go now and I will talk to you guys soon when I have a reading update. Bye besties, happy Monday and happy April. Today is the first day of April and it has been a few days since I was able to pick up the camera. We had a super busy weekend, but I have been productive. I finished a book, made progress on another and started another. So I have quite a few reading updates for you all. I also got some books in the mail. I also got some bookish candles in the mail. So we have a few things to go over, which I'm really looking forward to. Oh, also did want to discuss Dune part two because we did go and see that and it was so, so good. Oh my God, I haven't read the book. So I don't know if it was a faithful adaptation, but I have seen a lot of people who have read the book really praising it. So I'm going to assume that it was for the most part, but I just loved it. It was so good. It was so beautifully shot. It was amazing. All of the actors were incredible. Austin Butler, Fade, is a terrifying character, but I loved him. Like I could not keep my eyes off of him when he was on screen. I really feel like he stole the show. He did such an amazing job. What a nightmare demon of a character, but I was so here for it at the same time. I, okay, can I just go on a weird, little side tangent. I hope some people can relate to this. I remember Austin Butler being on Zoe 101. I also feel like he might've been on Hannah Montana as well, but he was definitely on Zoe 101 and he played Zoe's boyfriend for like a little three episode arc or something like that. I cannot believe that that actor became what Austin Butler is today. Like in Elvis, nominated for an Oscar, in Dune Part 2 as this terrifying, amazingly acted character. Like he has just transformed so much and it's just so wild that I'm like, you were on Zoe 101 and now you're like this actor. I don't know, but that just like blows my mind that I'm like, wow, look at where you started. Look at where you are now. I guess I'm proud. I guess I'm proud because I have been rocking with him since the Nickelodeon and Disney Channel days. And it's just amazing how his career has changed. And like Fade is a character that is going to stick with me for a while. The whole time while I was watching him, I was just thinking, I cannot believe that you were on Zoe 101. Like what a time. But anyway, Doom Part 2 was very good. Super excited about it. Definitely a movie that I will re-watch for years to come. Okay, so now let's get into reading updates. So number one, I did finish my reread of A Dawn of Onyx. So I did really enjoy this book. Definitely enjoyed it more the second time around. I am still going to stick with a four star rating though. This is not a perfect book. It definitely has a few flaws. There is quite a bit to be desired with the world building, with some of the plotting. The thing is with fantasy romance in general, I do not expect the same like level of world building or magic system, you know, all of that that I would get from just kind of like a straight up fantasy. I do view fantasies and fantasy romances very differently in those regards and kind of what I look for and what I judge those books to be good by. But I still do like a bit more world building than this gave me, a bit more strategic plotting than this gave me. But to me, the strength of this book is the romance. It's just so much fun. Like I really do enjoy our characters. I like the tension between them. It's just a good time. This is the type of fantasy romance that you can sit down, you can knock this book out in a day or two, and you're gonna giggle and kick your feet because the romance and tension and banter between our characters is very, very fun. So I am really happy that I reread this. Definitely needed the refresh before the second book came out, but I feel ready now and I'm really excited for that book. Okay, so then I am also still working on Heat of the Everflame. I only have 200 pages left, you guys. I am determined to finish this book tonight. After I film this, I am going to sit down, edit, and then my whole night is free. So I'm really going to try to focus on finishing this book. Really excited for the ending. I've heard that the end of this book is absolutely crazy and it's gonna be wild because I don't have a book to continue on to because the fourth and final book is not out yet. I've just really enjoyed reading the series over the last few months. I'm gonna be sad when I read the finale and I'm honestly gonna be sad when I finish this because I won't have any more DM or Luther or Taryn to get me through until June, which is crazy, but this is going really well. I don't know if I love it more than Glow of the Everflame. To me, Glow was just like perfection all the way through. I'm gonna save like my overall thoughts for this book once I finish, but I am really loving this. It's definitely gonna be like minimum a four star, still a very, very strong book, but I'll give you guys kind of my final thoughts once I finish, but I'm really excited and hope that the ending is not too terrible. All right, and then because I don't have enough going on, I decided to start another book. That is Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. So this is a very, very popular romance. I I'm sure you have already heard of it, but it does follow Johnny and Shannon and their story of falling in love. They go to Tommen College and there's a big focus on the rugby team. I think that the series as a whole is going to be following like the players on the rugby team and Johnny is one of those players. Shannon ends up transferring to the Tommen College and ends up meeting Johnny in this very like fun, awkward, meet cute way. And we are just watching their story take off from there. Please do check the trigger warnings for this book before you decide to pick this up if you are interested because there's definitely some heavy content here, particularly with Shannon's home life. So it's definitely a more emotional romance, but 
as I said, I'm only a little bit into it. I think I'm like 20% of the way through, but I'm really liking this so far. I can totally see why I see so much praise for this series. I really do like the characters. I'm liking the setting. And the biggest thing for me, the biggest standout of this book so far is I really like the way that Chloe Walsh provides so many details about Johnny and Shannon's lives. I feel like this is so much more than a romance. I feel like I am just getting Shannon and Johnny's life story, which I really like. Like we really get to know their friends. We really get to know their day-to-day -day lives. We really get to know just like every thought that they have about everything that's going on in their day. And I don't know, I hope that that makes sense, but I feel like it just makes the story feel so much more immersive and whole. And I'm really liking that. I am also so here for the side characters in this book. I'm kind of more here for the side characters than I am for Johnny and Shannon. I do really like them. They're very cute. They're very sweet. But obviously I'm talking about Gibsy. I need his book. I don't know if we're getting a book for him, but we need to, and I need it because he is the star of the show as far as I'm concerned. I love every single time he is on page and I really, really hope that we get to see more from him. But I do like this whole group of friends that is kind of slowly building. I like seeing their lives day to day and I'm excited to see where this goes. I am very early on, but I am definitely enjoying this and I feel very committed to reading the entire series because I wanna to get to know all these characters really well. And Chloe Walsh's writing does lend itself to getting to know her characters super, super well. So I'm liking this. All right, so now I have a little book haul for you guys. So after I started Binding 13, I got about 100 pages into it. I was like, yep, yep, I'm fully, I'm in, I'm committed on the series. So I did go ahead and order the Bloom editions of Binding 13 and Keeping 13 because the series did get picked up by Bloom. So this edition of the series, this is no longer available. So I did need to get kind of the updated series version. So as I said, I got Binding 13 and Keeping 13. I really like these covers and these are also super floppy, which we love. Also picked up Saving six and redeeming six. I believe this follows Joey and Aoife. I don't even really want to look on the back because I'm afraid of spoiling myself, but I do think that is who these two books follow. And also looking forward to that. I don't really know too much about Joey or Aoife so far, but I know that Joey is Shannon's brother. But I'll be curious to read about their story. They are already together in Binding 13, so I think that this is going to go back a little bit, so we might even get to know a little bit more of Shannon and what her life was like leading up to the events of Binding 13. So I think that'll be really cool. I also picked up The Veiled Kingdom by Holly Renee. So number one, this cover. So so stunning, so pink. I am in love with it. Also, I have read one other book by this author. It's like A Kingdom of Stars and Shadows, something like that. It was a shorter fantasy romance and very spicy. I feel like it was almost like a novella, maybe. I don't know, but I did enjoy that book, so I do think that I will enjoy other books by this author, and it recently came out. Also, Tori from Tori Between Pages, she read this and she really enjoyed this, and I feel like she and I have super similar taste with fantasy romances, so I definitely wanted to pick this up per her recommendation. All right, and then a, another book that I picked up because of a booktuber recommendation was because of Erin at Booked and Busy. She recently put out a fantasy romance recommendations video, and this book was in that video, and I had never heard of it before. So it is A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane. She said it was absolutely fantastic and I trust her implicitly so I'm really excited to start this and I hope that I enjoy it as much as she did. All right and then we have one more book in here. Oh no two books actually. So the first one is Peaches and Honey which is part of the These Immortal Truths series by R. Reita. This is a fantasy romance that I've seen at the book stuff fan girl girlies talking about. Very much looking forward to it. Also a little bit shorter. I've been keeping my eye out for shorter fantasy romances because all of them are so long. They're always like over 500 pages, which we love, but sometimes we need a break. So I heard about this one and it sounded good. And then the last book I have is Beyond the Aching Door by Victoria Meyer. It's book one of the Fate Bound duology. I saw on Bookstagram Charlie's Book Rex. She really, really loved this book and said it was fantastic and one of her new all-time favorite fantasy romances. She also compared it to A Court of Silver Flames and Divine Rivals, which I thought was a very interesting combination and got me really excited. So I'm really looking forward to this. I'm super intrigued by that comparison. Harrison. On the back, it says a mortal journalist, a mysterious series of drownings, an exiled fae king, a forgotten fate song, one last desperate chance to save magic from extinction. Sounds very cool. Really like the cover. Very excited about this. All right. And then lastly, I wanted to show you guys the candles that I picked up recently. I'm low on candles, so I needed to fix that. And all the candles I got are from Novel Wicks. They do a lot of like literary bookish themed candles. And for the month of March, they were doing like Sarah J Mass themed promotion. So I decided to purchase some Sarah J Mass themed candles, specifically Throne of Glass themed candles. So very excited about that. So number one, I have the Aelin Galathinius themed candle. I don't really want to show you guys the cover because it's mildly spoilery. It smells like almond and honey. And I really like that they put like glitter in their candles. Really beautiful. Next up, I got Rowan Whitethorn, which of course smells like pine. Pine is probably one of my favorite scents. And Rowan is a top three Sarah J Mass male main character for me. So I had to get this. This one is kind of like bluish green, sparkly on the inside. Then I got To Whatever End. Once again, I'm not going to show you guys the front, 
but it smells like sandalwood, patchouli, and musk, and really beautiful and vibrant. And then lastly, I got Manon, and it is caramel apple scented. And oh my God, it smells so good and really, really pretty. All right, so that was the longest vlog update of my life. So I'm gonna go now and I'm going to keep on reading Heat of the Everflame, going to probably listen to the audiobook for Binding 13 as well, edit, get organized, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow with more reading updates. Hello, my loves, how are we? So it is time for another reading check-in. I have very exciting news. I finally finished Heat of the Everflame by Penn Cole and oh my God, holy cliffhanger. I am not okay because this is the first time that I have finished a book in the series and I do not have another book to go on to. I need that finale, like I need air. I cannot believe I have like two full months to wait until we find out the fate of all of our characters and how the story is going to wrap up. But I am so, so excited for it, honestly. I just feel like it's going to be such an amazing finale. I feel like this book set up a lot of crazy things, a lot of very intense plot lines that need to get tied together, but I think it was a super solid installment and I really, really enjoyed this book. So I think I'm going to rate this book four stars. There were definitely moments that gave me like five star vibes, but then there were also some moments that gave me four star vibes. So I'm going to go with four star. I did really enjoy this book. I think we did a lot of world building in this book, which was really helpful and I think just developed the story a lot more. We got a lot of revelations that we've been wondering about. We got some character romance development that I really enjoyed, but there were definitely moments where the decision-making skills were like negative 10. You know, sometimes our girl DM, love her to death, but she is a bit of a chaos demon and some of her decision-making, I was just like, why are you doing that? Or why are you reacting this way? Why don't you just do it this way? This seems so obvious. So I do think some of my frustrations with her did impact the reading experience a little bit, but it's kind of par for the course because she's been a bit chaotic since page one of Spark of the Everflame, to be honest with you. But I think that for me, Glow of the Everflame, which is the book before this, was just so perfect perfect, like every single page. So that's why it was just like an easy five star. This was really good, really solid, but I think just because of some of those things that went on and I can't spoil it, so I'm sorry I'm being so vague, but that does make this a four star book to me, but I still really loved it. This series has my entire heart and I cannot wait for the finale. All right, so switching gears here, I wanted to give an update on Binding 13. I don't remember where I was the last time we talked, but I'm much farther. I am 79% of the way done with this book and I am really, really enjoying myself. This this book is so good. I am feeling so many things. Chloe Walsh's writing is so visceral and honestly, oh god, okay. I feel like I'm about to start tearing up and I specifically did not film an update yesterday because every time I tried to talk about this, I started tearing up. But um, I, the things that are happening in this book, uh, particularly with Shannon and her home life are really, really hard to read about. This book is, it, it's kind of tough to read at times. I've been taking lots of breaks. I mean, I've made good progress, but yesterday I was continuously putting the book down because yeah, I just, I just want to say again, please do make sure you check the trigger warnings before picking this up because it is very intense. I'm really enjoying the book, but at the same time, there are lots of moments that are very hard to read about. And this is just a really emotional story and it's really impacting me and affecting me. And these characters feel so real to me, the way that they're written, they feel like real people. I'm just really affected by it. So while I am enjoying this, it's also difficult at times. It's kind of weird, but overall, I think that this book is so, so good. I totally get why so many people love this. And I'm really nervous though. I'm getting close to the end and I assume that this is gonna end in a cliffhanger because we do have Keeping 13 as a follow-up. Really nervous about what that is going to be, but I really do love Shannon and Johnny. I think that they are both such amazing characters. I'm really rooting for both of them. They have so many obstacles, both in their life individually and as a potential couple. And I think just seeing them try to work through that, you can just feel the love between them. Like I said, Chloe Walsh's writing is visceral in a way that can be extremely painful, but also I think in a very just beautiful way because I do feel their feelings for one another and I think it's really well done. Also on a lighter note, I just love 
Gibsy. Like, I would go to war for that man. He is a side character, but I'm telling you, like, he steals the show every single time he's on page. I love him so much. Oh my god, I do think that he is getting a book. I think that the newest release, it's not quite out yet. I think that that is going to be Gibsy's book, and I am so excited for it, so I really want to get through the series so I can get to that, but I'm really excited about the series as a whole. I'm really connected to this world, and I'm really connected to this group of characters, and like I said, they just feel real, and this just feels like we are getting their entire, like, life story we are going to school with them alongside them on these journeys that they're going through and it's just yeah it's really touching the writing is just like I really just can't say enough about it I'm really enjoying that so I will probably finish this book today that is my goal as I said I am 79% of the way through so I'm almost done with it oh there is one thing that I'm like not obsessed with that I did want to talk about it's brought up a lot that Shannon is very small, very short, very tiny. And typically in a romance when that gets brought up, it's not like my favorite thing when we're constantly talking about how particularly the female main character is just so small and so tiny. And she does mention it a lot. I do give her a little more leeway because she is 16. If she was like a 25 year old woman, I'd be like a girly, okay, you don't have to say this as much. But I think just cause she's like a teenager, I'm not like harping on it as much because she's a kid and you know, that's sometimes things that kids say. So it's just the frequency of which it's being brought up that I'm just like, like, okay, we get it. Shannon is very, very small. She's very insecure about it though. She's not coming across like braggadocious or anything like that, but it is just very repetitive and something that I'm like, all right, let's keep it moving. So that is something that is like slightly annoying me, but I do really like Shannon. I do really like Johnny. The longer that this book has gone on, the more that I am just really, really falling for them. Just feeling all the feelings basically with Binding 13. So I am going to continue to do that while I finish this book, hopefully today. And then I have decided the next book I'm going to be reading in this vlog is going to be How Does It Feel by Janine O. Riley. Super excited about this. This is a darker fantasy romance and it is captor captive. Our female main character, I believe she is like a scientist or a researcher. She's in the woods looking for plants and mushrooms and she accidentally falls through like a fairy portal and then is the captive of the Unseely Fae King. I think this book sounds like a ton of fun. Like I am just going into this thinking this is going to be so much fun, lighthearted, really looking forward to this. I will maybe start this after I finish Binding 13 and I will give you guys my first impressions in a little bit. But yeah, I'm gonna go work on more of Binding 13 and then I will start this and we will talk soon. So it's the next day and I have more reading updates for you. Number one, I did finish Binding 13. So I finished this last night and oh my goodness, I really enjoyed this book, you guys. I liked it so much more than I think I thought I was going to when I went into it. Just because me and contemporary romance, we have had an interesting relationship kind of over the last year, I'll say. I haven't had too many all-time favorite contemporary romances hit me, but I definitely think that the Boys of Toman series is going to be an impactful series for me. I really, really loved Binding 13. I really like Chloe Walsh's writing style. As I've said multiple times already, I just love how detailed the writing is. I love how much I'm getting to know these characters and their friends and I feel like I'm just watching them live their lives. You know, I'm loving the romance. I'm loving that aspect, but I really love how much Chloe Walsh rounds the story out and I just feel like I know these characters. They feel so real and things just feel so visceral. It's just, it's a really, really impactful book. So I really, really loved this. The ending of this book was so incredibly difficult to read and I definitely want to pick up Keeping 13 very soon. I want to see what happens next with Shannon and John and just kind of how do we tie up their story. But I really loved this and I just feel like, oh my god, I just feel very affected by this book in a really good way. Like I, I loved the writing, I really loved the characters, particularly in the second half I feel like I fell in love with Shannon and Johnny even more. In the first half I felt a little less connected to them and I just kind of liked the all the group of friends and the story as a whole but now I definitely feel very deeply connected to the two of them and I'm so rooting for them and oh god they just deserve the world so I really really loved this. I'm gonna give it four stars. I think that there is a five star book in the Boys of Toman series for me. I really do. I just think that because the first half of the book I wasn't like as invested I'm just gonna go with a four star. It doesn't quite feel like a five star but I definitely think that there is one in the series for me because as I said I just love 
love the writing. So this is really good. I'm so happy that I picked this up and definitely excited to continue reading this series. All right, and then the next and final book that I will be reading in this video is How Does It Feel by Janine O'Reilly. So this is a captor, captive fantasy romance. Our main character, she is a human and her name is Callie Peterson. She is a biologist and she works in Michigan in this like wildlife refuge and works in conservation. She is researching about moths and butterflies. While she is out in the woods doing some research, she ends up falling through a fairy portal and becomes the captive of this very wicked unseely prince and she has to try to find a way out of that. He fights an attraction to her but he absolutely hates her at the same time because he thinks oh the humans have sent someone to assassinate me and that's what he thinks Callie is. He also ends up putting her through these trials as well to like entertain his court. So it's this whole big thing. So I'm over the 50% mark of this book and it's been an experience. Number one, this book starts out literally like a contemporary rom-com. Like it takes place in our world in modern day. There's no fantastical elements at all in the first part of the book. So this is definitely like a low fantasy, I guess you could call it. Tally is just, you know, living in the small town, trying to figure her life out. She doesn't have a lot of friends. Then kind of the fantasy elements pick up once she falls to that fairy portal, of course. But that's something that I guess I should have expected from reading the back. But for some reason, I don't know, I, it was just kind of threw me for a loop. But very very much modern day rom-com vibes in the beginning. And I think kind of my feelings about this book so far are, it is an entertaining book for sure. Like I am, I'm, I'm entertained and I, I want to see kind of what happens next, but I don't really like the writing in this book. Dialogue and, you know, Callie's inner monologue, it's just very cheesy. This book can be very over the top at times. Some of the things like the bog thing, if you've read this book is so just like, it's too much and just, I, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, I could tell pretty early on, like, you know, I just, I don't think I'm gonna connect with this writing style just because I think the dialogue is cheesy. Our main character, she was kind of irritating me at times, but I was still invested in the plot enough because I do think the plot is good and like, it's an interesting concept. And I was here for what was gonna happen to Callie. You know, I was here for like, okay, what's gonna happen when she's here? What does it actually mean for her to be a captive of this unseelie fae prince? But yeah, I just think, it's cheesy and a little bit over the top. And the book does not take itself too seriously. That is one thing that I will definitely give it. Like it's not trying to be this like epic fantasy romance or anything like that. But I think that it's just not a type of writing or type of book necessarily that I would connect to. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. But like I'm entertained at the same time. So I don't know. It's an interesting experience, but I just don't think that this is gonna be like a favorite of mine. I mean, I still have a ways to go, but it's not that long of a book. I feel like I pretty much understand this book and this just isn't something for me, I think. And that just has to do particularly with the writing and just the cliches and the cheesiness and how over the top it can be at times is just not my cup of tea. But I am going to continue reading this. I'm probably gonna finish this like tonight and then I'll talk to you guys tomorrow and just give you guys my final thoughts. So let's go do that. I'm gonna go finish How Does It Feel? and we will talk soon with my final thoughts. Good morning, friends. How are we doing? I am here to close out the vlog, but first, of course, I wanted to give you my final thoughts on How Does It Feel by Janine O'Reilly. So this was interesting. This is a very, very interesting book. I, as I said, I was entertained. I truly was. I was very entertained by this book, but I don't like necessarily, I don't know, guys. I just, was this book good? No. Was I entertained? Absolutely. Do with that what you will. I thought that this was fun, but I thought that it was also bonkers <laughs> at the same time. A little ridiculous, very over the top, and the writing for me was just very cheesy. It didn't do what I like a fantasy romance to do. I don't think that this is the book for me, but I was entertained. I'm gonna be honest, there were there were scenes where I was like, wow, this is fun. Like, this is fun. Is this absolutely ridiculous? For sure. But I had fun with it at times. And then other times I was just fully like, you know, kind of over it, rolling my eyes a little bit. But I am glad that I gave this book a shot. I had a lot of curiosity about this book. I really wanted to know what all the buzz was about because I know that a lot of people on Book Talk have talked about this book. So it was definitely on my radar. And I'm glad that I read it. But for me, it's just not my type of book, but I can like see why someone would like it. It's just not my preferred fantasy romance, I guess. Oh, and I did want to say the ending of this book, that completely blew me away. Never in a million years would I guess that the book was going to end the way it did. The plot twist was really good. 
Like, I will 100% give all the flowers to that plot twist because I was shocked. I was like, what? When I was listening to the audiobook and it was all kind of coming out, I was like, where, who, what, when, why? Like, I cannot believe that that was kind of all brewing underneath the plot that was going on here. I think just the writing and the characters, I never really fell in love with our female main character or our male main character. They were just fine. And then at times I like really didn't connect with them, especially like just some of the dialogue and things like that. But I'm gonna give it two stars. Certainly not my book, but it could be yours. So if it does intrigue you, give it a shot, but just know it's a fun, silly time. It doesn't take itself too seriously. But yeah, those are my thoughts on how does it feel? I don't really have like too much to say just because it was pretty cut and dry from the beginning that I could tell the tone of the book was one that I wasn't a huge fan of, but I still wanted to see it through. I didn't want to DNF it, one, because it was just so short, and two, I was genuinely curious about how this book was going to go. So I don't regret reading it, but it's not going to be a new favorite. All right, besties, so that is going to be it for this week's reading vlog. If you made it to this point in the video and you wanted to let me know, go ahead and leave the Saturn emoji, and please make sure that you're following me on Instagram and Goodreads. They are always linked down below. I really appreciate that you watched this video. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. I love you all so, so much, and I will catch you guys in the next one.